about to sing now is called My Refuge, written by myself and Wayne Brockett. And it is based on Matthew 24, where Jesus talks to his disciples about what will happen when it comes to the end of the age. He talks about nations rising up against nations, rumours of wars, famines, earthquakes, hearts of men growing cold and people turning away from God. But in the midst of this chaos and confusion, Jesus says in verse 6, See to it that you are not alarmed. The Passion Translation says, Don't panic or give in to your fears. And it's so easy in this time that we're in to give in to our fears and anxiety. But we must also remember that Jesus has already overcome the world. Psalm 46 says, The Lord is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in time of trouble. So I pray that as we sing these words, it will encourage you to remind yourself of who you serve and who God is. Though nations should rage and there are rumours of war, the earth it groans and quakes and mountains they fall. The love of men grows cold and hearts turn away. The threat of death is near cause of who I obey. I won't be alarmed for you, most high are my refuge, my refuge, and I will take heart for you, most high are my refuge. When the narrow road seems long and other paths they seem bright. Good morning, church. My name is Emmanuel. I hope you're all doing well. 
Um, I have the privilege today of reading the scripture and praying for us all today. And the scripture we're reading from today is Psalms 1. Psalms 1 reads us so. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but who delights in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. This person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaves do not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that will be blown away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the ways of the righteous, but the ways of the wicked leads to destruction. Father God, I just pray for each and every single person that can hear my voice right now, um, for each and every single person in church. Lord, I pray that you will just help us to be people that meditate on your word day and night, that fall in love with your word, that just want to do exactly what you've called us to do, that are tied to your will above our own will. Lord, we're placing your will first. And Lord, I pray that you help us to um, not be like those that are against you, but be like those that are for you in everything that we do. Understand that we shouldn't be tying ourselves to the mockers or the slanderers or anything like that, but being people that are just God-fearing um, and carry ourselves the way you have called your people to carry themselves, Lord, in all that we do. Help us to remember the sacrifices that you have made, that we may do this and live Christianity out better with more love for our community, for our church, for our families, um, and for ourselves. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hey, good morning everyone. You just caught me uh, walking home. Uh, I'm on my street and as you can see behind me, uh, lined with many, many houses. We all live in houses, uh, bungalows, flats, high rises. But of course, it's not the building itself that is important. What is important are the people that live inside them because it's the people that actually create the home at the end of the day. Let me give you an example. So over the road here, this is where uh, Lee and Sandra live. Lee and Sandra have grown up children and uh, they've moved out and they now foster children, which is really cool. And then over my shoulder now is where uh, Max and Helen live. Max and Helen are an older couple and uh, they don't have any children at all. And then if we flip over the road to here, this is where Gary and June live. They've got grown up children. Uh, one of them is still living at home and behind a green front door is Mary and Simon with younger children. And uh, one's in primary school and one is in secondary school. And then the end house over there is where Nigel and Sue live. They've got grown up children, uh, one of them still living at home. And if I flip round to just here, to this house, uh, this is where uh, Jess and Andy live and their fabulous little boy Lenny. And they are our next door neighbours because right here is my house. And of course, it's not the houses that are important. It's the people that live in them. Now, I am really convinced that actually when we all go indoors and we shut those front doors, many of us have the exact same problems and the exact same challenges, whether that's a relationship, whether it's a financial, whether it's raising small children to teenagers, so even having adult children still living with us uh, just because it's so uh, expensive to move out now. But actually, what goes on behind those front doors, we really don't know. The home should be a really special place with lots of fond memories. It should be a place of loving, accepting, provision and nurturing. But that isn't always the case. And so today I want to talk about children in safe homes. Not only uh, what does that look like, but also what can we do to make sure we are nurturing a safe home for our children. So I'm going to pop indoors now and make myself a cup of tea, set up, and then I'll be right back with you. So here we are, we're in my home, we're in uh, the conservatory of my house. And uh, we all grow up in a home somewhere or another. It may be uh, with our parents, like I did. I grew up with my mum, my dad, and my little sister, Jackie, that uh, all of you at ECCI will definitely know. 
And, um, but that's not the case for everyone. Sometimes uh, there could be single parent um, families, you can be living with auntie and uncles, it could be grandparents that are raising you. Uh, some people uh, grew up in state homes uh, where the state looks after uh, the children, but we all grow up in homes. From generation to generation we grow up in a home. My mum and my dad would have grown up in homes, both with single parents having lost their dads in the Second World War. And then obviously my sister and myself and now we have families of our own as well. But families are incredibly important. They're important to most cultures around the world. But the idea of the family was actually God's idea. He made them male and female. He created them. Genesis 1, 27 tells us. And he also then says to Adam and Eve, the first man and woman, he gives them this command. He says, be fruitful, multiply and fill the earth. Genesis 1, 28. And so we're born into families. And so the family is incredibly important. Now there's different models of family. I kind of touched on it a little bit. The, some are just nuclear families uh, where you might have the mum and the dad and a couple of children and they're very independent. They live by themselves. Then you'll have other families where actually many generations and different families will live together from grandparents and aunties and uncles and the children and so on and so forth. But the parent the family itself is incredibly important. So the basic model of the family, uh, if we're taking parents and children, um, come with responsibilities. The responsibility sets very much upon the parents for nurturing, growing and caring for the children. Jesus takes this for granted when he illustrates God's love and care towards people. We can read this in Matthew uh, 7, 9 to 11. It reads like this. Or which one of you, if his son asked for bread, would give him a stone? Or if he asked for a fish, would you give him a serpent? If then you who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask? Psalm 103, 13 says this, As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those that fear him. Uh, in Titus 2, 4, Paul uh, is writing this letter and he says to the young women to love their husbands and their children. You know, the home comes with responsibilities and there's certain patterns. It should be an environment where you feel protected, you feel loved, you feel cared for, where children are very much nurtured. But sadly, that is not always the case. Even within uh, the wider areas of my personal family, there are those that have not experienced those things in the home. And actually for many of them, even though they're later in life now, they're still living from the pain and still living from a place of hurt of what they experienced as children within a home. And so what is the pattern uh, of or what can we look out for? I'm just going to share a quick story for you now about a young girl and her experience of the home that she lived in. So let me share with you now uh, Sophie's story. Sophie's obviously not her real name. My experience of being neglected as a child are with me every day. No one was there at the time. Even when they were there, they weren't properly there as they were out of it. It was a living hell. Mum wouldn't even notice if I'd gone to school as she was always upstairs, smashed out of her face. I wanted to go to school as I didn't want the same life as my parents. I tried to speak to school, but they thought because I was a good kid, there wasn't really much going on. I think the children who are neglected might have a second life when they are at school or when they are with friends because they can put a smile on their face and pretend that everything was okay. Then for a minute, you can even fool yourself thinking 
that everything is okay. I was often left by myself and lonely. I felt lonely when mum and dad were in the house because they weren't there. Like mentally, they were completely out of it. I often felt low. And one of my lowest points was when I tried to go and speak to my mum and dad about their drug use. They denied it all and just kept yelling and yelling. And so I left. I didn't know what I was going to do. It was like everyone hated me and though I thought I was lying and I felt I was completely alone. It felt completely hopeless. I took an overdose as I felt there was no way out. I wanted them to listen to me. And so there's Sophie's story. It's a sad story, but it is not an uncommon story. That's the saddest of news, that our childhood should be something great, wonderful and beautiful, that builds great memories, that invests into us and prepares us for our future. And so what can we do? You know, I didn't want to bombard you with figures, but the thing, number of children waiting to go into uh, foster care at the moment has gone through the roof. The number of children that have experienced neglect, physical abuse, sexual abuse, uh, of watched domestic and violence during COVID has gone up by 20%. And of course, they're only the figures that they we're hearing about. There's always a hidden cost behind this. And so today, whether you're uh, young, whether you're already in a family or been through a family, there's a responsibility on all of us because we're all connected to a family in some way, whether that's a physical earthly family or a um, Christian family as well. We have a level of responsibility to care for children. And so let me just have a little look now at seven things that I think are important in knowing or understanding to giving children a, a great environment in which to grow up, flourish and bloom. And so number one, OK, children are a part of God's creative plan. You know, I've already touched on Genesis 1.28, but I just want to broaden it a little bit where it says, Be fruitful, increase in numbers, fill the earth and subdue it you know adam and eve are um, told by god to go and be fruitful to have children from the very beginning children were part of god's family and part of god's creative plan for humanity children were not an afterthought they are uh, incredibly important members and part of how god sees the family. So number two, children are a gift from God to families. And uh, Psalm 127, three to five reads like this. Children are a heritage from the Lord, offspring a reward from him. Like arrows in the hands of warriors are children born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them, they will not be put to shame when they contend with their opponents in court. You know, the word heritage comes from a root word uh, to get inherent. Uh, it's an honour and a responsibility to have children, little ones that God blesses us with. And he entrusts them to our care. They're our responsibility to stand beside them to provide for them, to educate them, uh, and to nurture them. They are a gift from God, and that's the way we should view them. Even though I know that sometimes it can be hard work doing that. Number three, children need guidance. Proverbs 22.6 says, train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it you know for people that like gardening when they uh, put um, small bushes or trees in in fact the council uh, do it when they plant a young tree they will always plant a bigger piece of wood next to it to support that tree in its uh, younger years until it becomes strong enough 
to stand by itself. You know, that's the responsibility of parents, to stand beside our children, to nurture them, to love them and to guide them, especially in the ways of the Lord. And you know, we need to be hands-on parents. We can't be in the home, but absent of it. You know, many dads today come in and they're still going on their game console and having their dads out time. You know, this is really two dads. You need to be hands on in that home with your children, loving them, caring for them, providing for them, nurturing them. It's our responsibility, both as the husband and the wife, but it's the man's responsibility to take the lead. Don't be an absent parent in the home. Number four, our children need discipline. You know, disciplining our children is hard work. And do you know what you need for disciplining your children? I'll tell you. We can find it in Galatians 5, 22 to 23. We need love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, fruitfulness, gentleness, and self-control. No one likes discipline, but actually discipline is also protection. You won't always get it right as a parent. I can put my hands up here and say there's many a time when the girls were younger, I would go in their bedroom at the end of the day and they looked so beautiful when they were asleep and cute and little. And I'd say, God, you know what? I've got it so wrong today. Please help me. I'm sure if you speak to my children, they'll be able to tell you the many times that dad and mum got it wrong in disciplining our children. But you know, discipline is important because at the end of the day, discipline is protection. Discipline will protect you from lawlessness and rudeness. And no one wants children to go off in that direction. For me, I always try to get help from people that were ahead of the journey for me to help me every season bringing something new. But as a parent, it was my responsibility and it is our responsibility to discipline our children. After all, God disciplines us. You can find that in Hebrews 12. Uh, number five has quite a title to it. Uh, it's orphans, displaced and refugee children and children living in poverty need our care. Zechariah 7.10 reads like this. Do not oppress the widow or the fatherless, the foreigner or the poor. You know, even in the very best of circumstances, Small children are very vulnerable, even thinking of little Lenny that lives next door. He's only 18 months old. He's just a, the cutest little person you have ever seen. But the world around him is dangerous, but he doesn't always see those dangers that are around him. Now, the Bible clearly uh, singles out orphans closely followed by the father's list uh, for us to care for, that we have a responsibility for care for those that aren't in homes that have been displaced. You know, the staggering figure for refugees in the world is made up, half of it, by children. Half of our, the refugees in the world is made up by children. And you know, there's over 14,000 refugee children in the United Kingdom alone, somewhere that has nowhere to call home and that responsibility sits upon us because God asked us to care for those people. Hold that thought because I will come back to some blue sky thinking later on. Uh, number six, children need protection. Kind of a no-brainer for many of us but what does that protection look like? Well Numbers 32, 17 says this, Meanwhile, our, our women and children who live in fortified cities for protection from the inhabitants of the land. That was important to the families of the Israelites in that culture and time. But our children need protection. You know, as parents, it's going to change over the years uh, some of the things you have to protect your children from. There's something that I had to learn to protect my children from that my parents would never, ever have to have worried about for me. And of course, it's the tablet 
on the mobile phone. On these is a whole world that your children get an access to on YouTube, on Snapchat, on Twitter, on Instagram, through the chats. Who is influencing your children? What are the things that they're teaching them? What are the things that they're getting involved in? I used to take my girls' phones and I would check over them. I'd look at all their messages, what they were Googling, what they were following. They hated it. But it was my job as a dad and my responsibility to protect them. And there was a number of times that I found things that concerned me and my girls just could not see the dangers that I could see. There's a responsibility upon us to protect our children physically, emotionally, spiritually. Number seven, children are blessed by God. In Mark 10, 16, you can read this in a number of the Gospels, and he took the children in his arms and he laid his hands on them and blessed them. Of course, if you read the chapter, the disciples didn't really like this. In fact, they tried to stop people from bringing their children uh, to Jesus to have him bless them. And Jesus rebukes them and actually gives a kingdom picture of the importance of children and their hearts and minds and actually uh, having a relationship with Jesus. You know, uh, God wants to bless children. Understandably, he only has children. And so in the same way that Father God loves us, cares for us, provides us, guides for us, it is our responsibility in the families and homes that we have to nurture, love and care for our children. I don't know what experience you had growing up in a home. It may have been an absolutely fabulous one. You hold the fondest of memories. Maybe it was the complete opposite and it's affected the way you live and think ever since. If it's the second of two, there's always hope. There is freedom in Christ. And if you have suffered abuse at any stage, seek professional help, get counsel. But for all of us, there's a responsibility within the family that we live in. We all have a role to play. And safe homes should be something that every single child has access to. So let me just pause you right there. Let's do a little bit of blue sky thinking. And so just uh, some thoughts in closing today. If you ever uh, see child abuse, if you ever hear of child abuse or you suspect it, you have to report it. To not do so is child abuse. I know there could be sometimes be a fear around it, but in reporting it, you might just be saving a child's life. And so the responsibility for this falls upon all of us. Um, the other thought is this. Have you ever considered adoption or fostering? It's actually a journey that uh, Rachel and myself started uh, when the pandemic uh, kicked off. Um, Wolf and Forest Council were looking for part-time foster carers and uh, we uh, put ourselves forward now at the time uh, the need had already uh, gone and as we journeyed through and as we started the training uh, it came clear to us that it just wasn't the right time or the right season for us but what about you have you considered adopting or fostering could you give a safe home to a child i can't talk about fostering without talking about Joel and Emma McKenzie. Not only do they have their three fabulous children, but they also have foster children as well. And they're doing a fantastic job. Uh, many of you may know that Emma is even fighting right now for a brighter future for one of her foster children in uh, being able to go to university. So could you give a safe home to a child? And lastly, what about Blue Sky Thinking? You know, we already have a manual community school where we educate children. We've got our second school being built at Bean Park. But what about a children's home? 
You see, this building is in uh, the area where I live. It's within Hines Park and it's a purpose built care home. And over the years, it has had uh, old people there, it has had uh, children there, and it has had young people there. But many a time, it becomes vacant and uh, is in disuse. What about a children's home? What about a manual community church home for children? Just a little bit of blue sky thinking there. I think that's a, an exciting idea for the future, possibly. But the responsibility of children in safe homes falls upon all of us across every generation. If we own a home and we're the heads of those homes, let's make sure that that is a loving, caring, nurturing place for the little people that are in it. For others, it may be uh, we're going to have a home of our own one day. What would you want that to look like for you, your family and the children within it? Uh, if you're in virtual groups, I've already sent out some questions to those. If you're not in a virtual group, let me encourage you to get into one. It's my favourite thing on a Sunday. I look forward to seeing my virtual church family where we uh, learn and grow from one another. And it is a great time. If you're not in one yet, do contact the office. It's never too late. And uh, today, be blessed, everyone. Father, we give you thanks this morning for your steadfast love that greets us. Great is your faithfulness. You are a father to the fatherless and a friend to the friendless. And this morning, Father, we sing honour and praise to your name. I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love. Dead of night and tell me that you're pleased and that I never run on. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. And I've seen many searching for answers far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers. Only you can provide, cause you know just what we Say a word, you're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are. It's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. And you are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To us.
Morning Church. I'm here on behalf of the nursery to say a massive thank you to everyone who has contributed and donated to the church's Hope and Love project. Just before Christmas, we were able to support a number of families in the nursery and give them supermarket vouchers. This made a huge difference to them. They were calling into the nursery to say thank you, but it wasn't just thank you, it was a heartfelt cry of gratitude. It really made a difference to them. And we want to continue to support families like this, not just in the nursery, but beyond the nursery, beyond even Emmanuel Community School. We want to support vulnerable families in need. And that's why we're coming to you. Please give, please go to the church website and find the Keep In Touch page. And on there, you'll find a link to the GoFundMe page for Hope and Love. It doesn't matter how small a, a, a contrib every contribution makes a difference. So if you are able, please do continue to support this project, Hope and Love, and offer families in need hope and love. Morning Church, my name is Cassandra and I'm 19 years old and I'd like to take a moment to talk to you about how God has moved in my life and how my life has changed ever since I gave my life to Christ. So I was born in America and shortly after I was born, I was then moved to Tanzania where I was raised by my grandparents. Um, Tanzania is my homeland and where most of my family is from. And so my grandparents raised me there until the age of five. My parents couldn't really take care of me because they had their own reasons why they couldn't. And so my grandparents raised me until five and at five it was then decided that I should then move to the UK and live with a different family member. Um, in the UK it didn't really work out and I was then moved back to be with my grandparents in Tanzania. Um, sadly, um, my grandparents could no longer take care of me and although they loved me so much, it's because they were much older and so they couldn't really care for me anymore and so I had to be moved, then moved again out of the country to be with a different family member. Um, this didn't really work out and I was moved again to another family member. Um, so this was kind of the pattern in my life and I was moved um, between America, UK and Tanzania quite a lot and um with this i started to feel a lot of rejection because growing up um i always had to move around and um there was a lot of rejection and pain because every time those family breakdown i would always have to be taken away from where i was and i would have to move to a different place and i never really knew when i'll get a family that was mine that loved me and cared for me and be there for me and so it was a, bit of a difficult time and yeah um eventually i was then back in the uk and when i was in the uk um i was then living with a different family member and this also then broke down and um that family member then decided that they no longer wanted to care for me when this happened i had nowhere to go and um school then got involved and they contacted social services when they did this um i was then put into foster care um when this happened my whole entire life changed and I got placed into an amazing family. Um, so I'm now a part of the Mackenzie family and I have the best family just ever. And it just, God has just completely like cha changed my life and give, gave me what I needed. And my family, my new family loves me, cares for me and just supports me and just is there for me all the time. They fight for me and they're just everything I could ever ask for. And it just shows how God has just always watched over me. And so they actually attended Emmanuel Community Church. Um, so then I started attending and I fell in love with the church and I fell in love with youth wave. I started attending youth wave. And one day when Pastor Dad was preaching at youth wave, I then gave my life to Christ. And they, my new family and my church, which is also now my family, started to support me um, in my relationship with God. And it just shows how God really um, moved in my life. And another example is my education. So because 
because I was moved around quite a lot, um, there were chunks of my education that were taken away. And so there were times where I would go a whole year and I haven't gone to school. Um, and so that would um, really um, affect how I did at school and I always have to catch up. But God, by the grace of God, I'm now, I've now recently just applied to university with the predicted grades of A star AA, which is all thanks to God himself and my mom, Amma, who literally fought for me to go to an amazing school and saw my potential and just fought for me to just do well. And she was always there late nights and just always there in terms of my education and just supporting me and everything. She's just amazing and um yeah so then now i've actually applied to university i'm gonna go to durham university to study law so that i can have a direct impact um on other people's lives especially those who are also in care and yeah and um unfortunately we recently found out that um because i was moving around quite a lot um i'm now uneligible i'm ineligible for student finance and um so we've had to find other ways to fund that um because despite me being in the country legally and actually being here for majority of my life um because it was all interrupted i now um cannot um claim student finance and so um we've had to find yeah other ways and so many people have supported and prayed for me and thank you to all of those people and um if anybody wants to support me please contact church for more information but god has taken me this far and i know he has a plan um and he just he's gonna make a way and yeah so thank you for listening bye Good morning ladies. Don't be late for the ladies breakfast on May the 8th, 9.30 to 11 o'clock when we're going to hear from four ladies about God in their jobs. So you can book in as usual via the office with Zoom about two weeks beforehand and we'll let you know. So keep your ears and eyes pierced and don't be late for May the 8th. Hey church, hope you're well. Um, I'm back again. But I really wanted to come and just share just some quick Good news with you all um, of a new job role that I'm part of and I believe that you can all be part of it with me really um, yeah so I will be a missionary in the London Borough of Lambeth um, mainly working in churches well helping churches to work with their youth and children's work just thinking of different ways that they can spread the gospel over the Borough of Lambeth and reach different kids different people for Jesus um, also thinking about different ways to really bridge that gap between um, youth and main church just really thinking about everything that we can to get the gospel out there um, yeah and I really wanted you to all be part of this with me I'm starting a prayer group a prayer letter um, where I'll be literally telling people everything that's going on in my job role and asking you for your prayers asking you to help me um, yeah just in my everyday work really um, but I really want people to kind of know what's going on and just be able to walk alongside me um, I know this journey is not going to be easy but I know with people by my side, it's going to be great. And I know that you guys can all be people that have one. You've already been there for me in terms of being in church. And I know being part of this new thing that you'll be there for me as well. So, yeah, starting a prayer letter. Um, if you could contact the office with, well, I guess you'll send them your email address. Um, just saying that you'd like to be part of my um, prayer group, um, prayer letter. And I will literally just send that letter out to you as well. Um, with hopefully some more personalised stuff as well. So you can get to know that as well. But literally, if you want to send me a message to talk about it as well, I would love to um, talk to you about it and let you know in more detail what's going on. Um, yeah, I'm going to need to make sure I'm fundraising in this time as well, being a missionary um, and just giving back to God's kingdom as well. Um, so if anyone is willing to help me with that as well, that'd be great. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for just taking the time to listen to this. Um, it's fun times. I'm happy. I'm happy that I can share this with you all. So yeah, take care. Look after yourselves and come and see you all soon.